Alrighty, so um, you are joining this webinar. We will be talking about equity and inclusion here at St. Edward's University um, and how our institution um, stands in support and supports um, our Black students and our general community as well. And I've um, been joined this evening with um, my lovely colleague, Leonel Lopez, who's the Assistant Director of Diversity and Inclusion here at St. Edward's, as well as three of our students. We have Courtney Reed, Alexis Reed, and Joy Ambrose. And um, so kind of just to give you all some general housekeeping of how this webinar is going to um, take place. If you want to go to the next slide, I'll give you all a rundown. So this is through Zoom and um, this session will be about 30 minutes or so. Um, we will be leaving time at the end for any questions that you all have um, as attendees. We'll be using the Q&A function. So please go ahead and type your questions on there. You can, be, you can ask your questions anonymously um, as well, but we will not be using the chat function. Also, just so you know, your camera and mic is, um, is turned off at this point, but we will keep ours on so that you can see our faces and hear from us directly. So just to give you an overview of who we are, St. Edwards, we are a small private Catholic liberal arts institution located in the beautiful city of Austin. As you can see, um, kind of the snapshot of what our numbers are. So we have a little under 4,000 students that attend. Average class size is 19, or excuse me, is 18. So um, being a student at St. Edwards, you're able to build really close, meaningful relationships with your professors who are there to teach our students directly. And you don't have to worry about any of our classes taught by graduate level students or teacher's assistants. Um, and also we just really strive and pride ourselves in being a diverse and inclusive campus. As you can see, we have students that come from all over the world to attend St. Edwards, not only within the state of Texas, but throughout the US and also internationally as well. And um, we do have a wide variety of different faith backgrounds and traditions welcome and represented on our campus. And then as far as um, things to do, we do offer over 50 different majors and minors to study. Um, and so definitely wanna encourage you to take a look at our website to see all the different academic programs that we offer. And in addition, we have over 100 different clubs and organizations. We are an NCAA Division II um, athletic program with 11 different men's women's team, excuse me, men's and women's teams. And then also just the fact that our campus is just a really beautiful place to live and study. And you can see on the first slide that I showed right when we started this session is, um, it is really green and very lush. Um, we are a tree certified campus with about 4,000 trees um, represented. And so just being a student at St. Edwards, it is, um, a really peaceful, calm, and beautiful place to be and to live and to study. And um, so yeah, I just kind of want to share all that with you. Um, I will be um, kind of going over um, the kind of admission and financial aid piece. So um, on behalf of the admission office, I do want to share with you our application is live right now. We are accepting applications. There are three ways to apply, either through the application on our website. We also accept the Common App or Apply Texas. We don't have a preference which way we use to apply, um, but we just want to make it accessible for you know, any student who is considering St. Edwards. If you go to our website right there, stedwards.edu, you can actually just start your application there directly. It is free to apply. Um, our first deadline actually coming up is November 1st, and then after then is December 1st. So as long as you apply by then, the application is free. We also do rolling admissions, so it's a really quick turnaround. You find out within about four to six weeks of our admission decision as well as what type of academic based scholarships you're eligible to receive. As you can see on this slide, we have decided to become test optional this year. So we definitely want to be able to remove any type of barriers that students may, may be experiencing um, kind of during the college application process. We know that this has been a very um, turbulent, stressful time with COVID and just all the different adjustments that everyone has had to make. And so we wanna be mindful that um, you know, that students don't feel like that you all have to take the SAT or ACT in order to be um, to apply for St. Edward's. And so you have the option whether or not you want to submit your score. You won't be penalized, you won't be disadvantaged if you do not receive an SAT or ACT score or send it to us. Um, but then if you do have a strong score that you feel is reflective of your academic ability, feel free to send that to us. So kind of you can make that call on that decision. And this test optional policy is for this year and beyond. So this applies to any seniors as well as juniors and those students who are younger. Um, and so, like I said, once you apply, we will automatically consider you for any type of academic-based scholarships. The top merit that we do offer is $26,000. When you receive that as a freshman, we'll receive that for all four years. We also do offer an additional scholarship for our out-of-state students. 
And then if you'd like to qualify for additional need-based aid, we do um, encourage all families to submit either the TASFA or, or excuse me, the FASFA or the TASFA kind of depending on citizenship. And that way we can put together a full financial aid package. And so in addition to working specifically with your admission counselor, like someone like myself, um, every single student that applies and is accepted to St. Edwards will be working directly with one of our financial aid counselors. And so their email address is listed on the bottom of this slide. And so you can definitely feel free to reach out to them if you have any questions about cost dependence and scholarships and that sort of thing. Um, and I did want to mention just um, a little bit more about us. So um, this, this webinar is just really a chance for us to share um, a bit more about who we are at St. Edwards and our commitment to um, diversity and inclusion. It's really part of our mission. And so um, we want to make sure that as students are considering what school to attend, they know that um, St. Edwards um, is, is a safe place for all students, that um, as you're at St. Edwards, you will feel well supported by our faculty, staff, and your peers as well. And so just wanted to emphasize that um, and you'll get to learn a little bit more in detail what that looks like on our campus. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, if you wanna go to the next slide, I'll pass this off to my colleague, Leonel Lopez, and he'll be sharing a little bit about the support that our university offers. Great, thank you, Anisha. And hi, everyone, again. Uh, my name is Leonel Lopez. I use pronouns he, him, his, and I serve as the Assistant Director to the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. It's a position that I've held now for a little bit more than two years. Um, and, and you might be wondering what diversity and inclusion is. Obviously, it's gotta be one of the funnest departments that you'll have here on campus, and you would be absolutely correct. Um, I always get a lot of questions about what diversity and inclusion mean and what an office like that would mean on a college campus, um, especially now. Um, whenever I get this kind of question from family, from parents, from guardians, and from prospective students or first year students, um, I always say the same thing. And I'm, I'm really grateful for Anisha for uh, bringing this up. Um, I think one of the most important things that we have to do it and, and understand is we have to break apart diversity and inclusion from one another. See, diversity is simply a state of being. It is the bringing together of separate uh, ideas, beliefs, values, identities, whether they be uh, race, ethnicity, spirituality, um, able-bodiedness, um, all those types of things is being able to bring those uh, different merging identities and values in a space. Um, but that's not quite enough and not quite enough here at St. Edwards University. What we need to make sure that we do is also include the inclusivity part as well. And that's where we come in as well. Um, because that inclusivity part is how do we actually bring these uh, varying identities together, varying individuals and communities and populations together and make a successful campus and make a successful learning environment for our students to be, um, well, successful, right? I always relate it to uh, having a diverse spice rack. Everybody can have a very diverse spice rack, but if you don't know how to actually put those things together, you're not going to do a great job cooking. Our job here at St. Edwards, everyone here is committed to making sure that we are doing an, a, a, an important job of being inclusive and diverse as much as possible. And one of the ways that our office uh, does this is by one, uh, overseeing separate uh, identity-based student organizations. For instance, our Black Student Alliance. Uh, I serve as the advisor for the Black Student Alliance or for BSA for short. Um, and it's been a position that I've, that I've held with, with varying types of um, executive boards. Um, and we're gonna, we have members here from the BSA who are gonna talk about their experience and their type of uh, community involvement with, our, with the campus and with the city of Austin as well. Um, my advising for, uh, for the BSA looks a lot like helping them get events here on campus, making, them, making connections uh, with uh, partnering departments on campus and making sure that the community resources are being provided um, in order for, this, for the organization to be successful. If the organization is successful, that means our students are successful. Students who are involved on campus are twice as likely to graduate. So we understand that making sure that we are cultivating uh, a, a community where students can feel uh, welcomed, feel at home, um, is really gonna play a huge part in making sure that they are getting something out of their time here on the hilltop. 
So I, con I consider it a vital part of my job to make sure that our organizations are being well run and that they are inclusive to every student um, and making sure that they're also partnering with one another as well. So the advising of BSA is a huge part of what I do. Um, our office also oversees the Black Student Family, uh, Black Student, Black Family and Student Luncheon that we have in the beginning of the fall semester um, and the Black Student Graduation Ceremony at the end of the spring semester. Now, obviously with COVID-19 uh, regulations in place, these had to look a little bit differently over the last uh, semester. Um, we weren't able to have a black, student a black student graduation ceremony in the spring semester, but what we were able to do was merge all of our affinity-based student, uh, student, uh, student affinity based graduations into a multicultural graduation ceremony. And while we weren't able to have a black family student fa uh, welcome or luncheon, um, it's something that we're considering to do for the spring semester and something that we do uh, uh, next year. Um, one of the other things that we do is have the uh, Black Expo where we invite um, local businesses, whether they be on campus or off campus, uh, actually be a part of an expo that we have here and help market them on our campus. Um, it was something that we had in the spring semester. We've had this for the last, I believe, five, six years now. Um, and the, it's all run through our Equity and Justice Council, which is run underneath my office. The Equity and Justice Council is an organization that I oversee. Um, our EJC also put on recently the Deconstructing the Black Lives Matter movement webinar um, around two to three weeks ago, um, to which uh, our fellow panelists were also played a part of that as well. Um, one of the things that we do within the university is making sure that we're facilitating these types of conversations um, around undoing systemic racism and undoing uh, prejudice and stereotypes, uh, stereotyping that we see um, on and off our college campus. So our university and our department plays a huge part in facilitating these educations um, whether they be with staff members, faculty members, and students here on campus. So one of the things that we have here for the university um, and what our office essentially collaborates with was um, early in the, in, the, in the summer was the vigil for George Floyd and supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. We considered this a huge aspect of what we did um, uh, along with just the reemergence of the Black Lives Matter movement um, this summer. Um, we made sure that we as a university moved together and in, in st stating that we were in support and stood with the Black Lives Matter movement um, while also making sure that we have these conversations that movements like these do not have one name, they do not have one face, um, they are much bigger than one person, they are meant to represent a huge, a large community. Um, and one of the things that we made sure to, to be very vocal was about, about was the fight against police brutality and the outright and tragic murders that have been put in place uh, systemically within our nation. Um, and one of the ways that we've tried to tackle this is um, by establishing the Presidential Task Force on Systemic Racism, where we have created a, a committee of people uh, from various parts of our campus, whether they be, again, staff members, faculty members, and students, and student leaders, to help lead charges and actually make real tangible changes on our community uh, here on campus as well. Um, and make sure that we have these kinds of conversations um, while not just making changes here, but long-term changes um, for our black community uh, on, at, here at St. Edwards University. And what we also have is the Presidential Advisory Council to create an inclusive community. This was created uh, years ago uh, when faculty members found that there were ways in which our university could continue to support marginalized and, un and, and oppressed uh, students uh, on our campus. So what we do is uh, we come together and we formulate ideas on ways to uh, use database numbers and student experiences and take that to the president of the university in order for us to make real change. And it's one of the initiatives that uh, has been very long-standing and successful.
So what I'm going to do now is in, is um, go ahead and introduce a few students that we have here, uh, Courtney Reed, Joy Ambrose, and Alexis Reed. Um, if y'all would go ahead and then introduce yourselves and um, the Black Student Alliance Student Organization. Um, I'll go first. Hi, everyone. I am Courtney Reed. I am the Vice President of our Black Student Alliance. Um, I'm a junior here at St. Edwards. I major in psychology. I minor in religious and theological studies, and I graduated from Stafford High School, and I was raised in Houston, Texas. I'll go next. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Alexis Reed. I am a sophomore here at St. Ed's. I am the event coordinator for BSA this year, and um, I am a sociology major with a criminal justice pre-law minor, and I went to Isidore Newman High School in um, New Orleans. I'm from New Orleans. Hi, everyone. Everyone. My name is Joy Ambrose. I'm a kinesiology major with a minor in women's studies. I am also pre-med, so that is all interesting. Um, I am from Houston, Texas, and I went to school at James E. Taylor High School. Great. Um, so uh, a quick opening here for the BSA. Can y'all talk about y'all's involvement here um, with some of the listed points, whether they be with the uh, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd vigils, along with y'all's participation in uh, the task, the Presidential Task Force for Systemic Racism, and maybe some of the other things that BSA uh, does here on our campus? Um, so I can speak for the vigils. I will let um, Alexis and Courtney speak for a few other things that they are definitely more um, advised on and take part in. Um, as far as the Brown and Taylor and George Floyd vigils, the George Floyd vigil was online this past summer. Um, yeah, especially after everything that kind of happened, it kind of ended. We were ending the semester. We were already online by that time. Um, and then Brown and Taylor, we were able to do it in person, obviously social distanced and um, responsibly. Um, but both of those, um, both of those vigils kind of came after either important decisions. So for Breonna Taylor, it was after the court decision, basically stating that you know the officers were upholding their part of the job, um, and then George Floyd after the officers were not indicted at all. Um, and it was definitely an interesting way to do it. These are the first times we've ever done vigils, um, as as far as like the last few years. Um, and so the Breonna Taylor one, myself, as well as Lavelle Brown, who's the president of BSA this year, spoke at that one. Um, and then all of us on this call were a part of the George Floyd one in the summer and each had like different parts as far as that. Um, and it was really just to acknowledge one, their deaths and what is happening in the world, especially as it impacts all of us because it could happen to any of us. Um, and then to be honest, just kind of mourning together. I think the George Floyd one was the first one. So it was, it was kind of new to everybody. Um, and it was definitely one of those things where we informed everybody um, as far as you know what's happening, you know how it's affecting us, and kind of resources. The Breonna Taylor one, I feel, was more uh, emotionally connected with all of us. We were able to kind of come together, even though we had to be socially distanced and obviously responsible as far as COVID. Um, but we were able to come together in a space and mourn together, and you know speak our mind. And we had different people, you know, speak and kind of say how they were feeling, and it kind of made us feel more as a community because we are a community on saying our community. However, we are also important a part of the black community, um, which at times is definitely a lot more important and it can be a lot more um, decisive as how it how we react and you know how we feel. So um, we also have monthly check-ins. Um, we put those on, like I said, it's different this year because of COVID, but we do have monthly check-ins um, that ranges from a different part of things. We had one that was online and we had one that was in person. That was kind of like a little study break for everybody. Um, we usually have food. I don't know how that's looking because COVID and you have to do it differently, but uh, we definitely try to have a different array of events that we can all kind of come together and kind of like relax. Um, I think when people hear Black Student Alliance, they think we're like all serious all day um, and talking about everything that happens. But to be honest, that's very tiring and you can't be a student if you're always focused on the negative and kind of always kind of being a realist. So, with BSA, I definitely feel we tried to make it as fun and as relieving as possible because between our you know, own responsibilities, whether at home or now, and our schoolwork, it can get very tiring to make sure that we're throwing 
also what being black in America is when we all have experienced it. Um, I can talk about the task force. I am on the President's Systemic Racism Task Force along with other students of color and especially uh, students from the Black Student Alliance. So I know Lavelle is on there, who's the president this year, and Sydney Wade, who was the president last year, but um, she graduates this year. So she's also still part of the organization. But we're on there and it's a very good step forward, a very good step in the right direction. Um, it is new this year. So we're still trying to figure a lot of things out, but it is nice to be a student, especially be um, a student of color there and have my input and have my voice and feel like I'm being heard and offer, you know, things that the university can do better because, you know, we're not perfect, but it's the effort that they're putting forward that's um, really speaking volumes. And it's nice to interact with um, administration and people that you really don't know and who are really like behind the scenes of a lot of the stuff that goes on with the university and make those connections and kind of meet new people. So it's, um, it's a lot of good work that's going on. We have we're starting to, you know, to kind of put plans in place right now. Um, so it's a really good effort. And um, it's nice that the university is actually trying because I know some universities aren't, but uh, it's nice to know that the university cares like that and wants to have students input, especially uh, black students and really amplify their voices during this time. And um, like Joy said, we have monthly check-ins at least we tried to, it was very different now with Corona, but um, I think she made a very good point in saying that, you know, we're not serious all the time. Like this is an organization that's for, um, you know, the well-being of black students and that has to do with mental well-being, physical well-being, everything. So talking about issues all the time, that's draining, that's depleting. And um, we like to make sure that everyone's doing good. And it's also just, you know, nice to connect with fellow black people because especially at this, university where you know there's not a whole lot of us it's very nice to connect every now and then and actually see each other even if it's virtual or if it's in person it's very nice to connect and have those people and have that kind of support system and kind of know that you aren't alone in things and um you know build friendships and connections and um i know that's definitely helped me a lot being here even though it's only like my second year i've made a lot of great friends through bsa so um, that's some of the things that I'm familiar with. And I know we partner with the Office of Admission and everything with like call nights for um, you know pr uh, prospective students. And I'll let Courtney talk some because I know she knows about this as well because we've worked together a lot with call nights and whatnot. So go ahead, Court. Um, basically to be an echo of Alexis and Joy, um, we do, do um, office of admission events. So we'll do call nights where we reach out to prospective black students who have shown interest in St. Edwards who have applied but not committed yet or who have started their application but not have, but they didn't complete it all the way. And we just talk to them, see how their senior year is going, um, see what it is that they need. Um, whatever questions answered, we're here. If, we just, if they just wanna chat about you know college life, we're there. Um, we also do, I think Joy mentioned, um, we do excursions. Um, so last year, we actually were able to take some prospective students and take them out to South Congress. Um, and we were able to have dinner with them. Uh, we were able to like walk down South Congress and show them like different spots that are really popular. Uh, we just were able to you know, have fun with them, show them what, a little bit about college life and also um, again, answer their questions. Uh, we also do our brunch. Um, where we um, answer questions of the parents this time and do a little panel. Um, again, talking about college life, college life as a Black student, um, talk about, you know, the reasons that we chose this school. Um, it's just a really good way for us to be connected to, like, future St. Edward students and future Black St. Edward students. Um, so it's really good. Wonderful. Thank you so much, um, Lionel, as well as Courtney Alexis um, and Joy, just for all that you all shared so far. Um, I do want to mention quick on this slide, um, the photo um, on the right hand side is actually what Courtney was referring to, our excursion we did last year. It's a really fun time to go out with um, prospective students like you all who are considering St. Edwards, who have already been admitted, 
and we're kind of comparing their different options. So not only to know about the university, but really be able to start building those relationships with some of our current students. And so this was pre-COVID. So you can see we went out to a restaurant and we were all together. We weren't wearing masks. It was such a great time um, to be able to, to enjoy that, um, that time together. And then on the left-hand um, part of the slide is a photo. We did an excursion just with our current students from BSA. We actually traveled from campus to learn a little bit more about the Greater Austin Black Chamber of Commerce, because just to kind of get connected with the Black community in the Austin area. And so that was a fun event that we did together. But also BSA, not only did they partner with the Office of Admission, they also partner with um, a wide variety of different um, departments throughout campus, as well as other student organizations. So it's very collaborative and it's um, just awesome to see kind of how our students are not only focusing on their own well-being and um, supporting each other, but then also um, you know partnering and with other organizations as well um, to encourage one another. So just wanted to mention that. So I do have some questions for our lovely panelists. Um, so I know our students already did their introduction as far as Courtney, um, Joy and Alexis, what year they are in school and where they're from. Um, but did, I have a list of questions I do wanna ask them to kind of hear a little bit more about their college experience. And so um, I wanna know each from each one of you, um, in addition to your role within BSA, what um, additional extracurricular activities or leadership roles have you had during your time at St. Edwards? And whoever wants to start, just go ahead and jump in. I can definitely start. Um, I've been a part of a few different things on campus. Um, some things I just wanted to try out um, and then some things I ended up loving. Um, I was a part of the PTO, which is the pre-therapy organization on campus. Um, I didn't want to do that anymore because I'm not pre PT anymore. I decided to be a pediatric um, doctor now, so obviously I wouldn't do that anymore. Um, but I'm also part of like AMSA, which is the um, basically the medical students in our org. I do big events, um, um, the Student Government Association, SGA. I'm sorry, I forget that like y'all don't know it, so it's throwing me off. <laughs> it's just kind of different things like that that just kind of explore um, my different loves and different things I would like to do. I'm definitely not a governmental or political person, but doing SGA kind of puts me in like the government of campus. Um, and it's really nice to do just because, it, you know, it kind of gets you out there. It starts you small, especially in the climate that we have now. Um, so that way you're not like overwhelmed with, you know, all the jargon and stuff like that. Um, I am also a part of campus ministry. It is a, it's one of the larger departments on campus. Um, and I've done different positions with them. So I've definitely been one of their leaders. I have been the resident peer minister, which is like a baby RA. Um, and now I'm a social justice intern for them. So I've definitely had a wide variety among campus, um, but yeah. Um, I can go. Um, so in addition to being um, part of BSA, I'm also part of Hilltop Christian Fellowship, which is um, basically like the Christian organization on campus. And we have Bible studies and sometimes we'll go off campus and do some things. Again, that was pre-COVID. So who knows how that looked this year, but um, we have Bible studies every week. And I'm also, um, again, part of the President's Systemic Racism Task Force. And um, I've also done community service and volunteered through Serve One Day, which is basically the um, like community service organization on campus. And they have volunteer opportunities. I think like, like I think they do it like once a month or like I know last year it was once a month, but they usually have um, like a lot of volunteer opportunities just throughout um, throughout the year on campus. And I've partnered with them before and it's really nice. And um, yeah, I've tried, um, what it was um it's like beta zeta something i don't know something with um the pre-law <laughs> um organization on campus i did some things with them last year but yeah just kind of like feeling around um, i'm only a sophomore so just kind of like figuring out you know what i am interested in and what i like to do but those are probably like the organizations i'm involved with the most um i am um, the leader of Hilltop Christian Fellowship. So um, basically, like Alexis said, we hold Bible studies, um, informal Bible studies for people who are interested, um, anybody of all demographics, beliefs, um, religious backgrounds are welcome to come. Um, I also am an RA here on campus in our St. Andre Apartments building. Um, so that really takes up most of my time, but yeah. Great, thank you everyone for sharing. There are so many different things that you all are involved in on top of your studies. 
Um, so it's very impressive. And also just kind of wanted to highlight um, just that you all are studying very different academic programs. And so just for all perspective students to be aware of who are part of this webinar tonight, and when you apply to St. Edward, you don't have to know what you want to study. Um, there are so many different academic programs to choose from. So during that first year, you'll be working with an academic success coach who will help you figure out um, what exactly your major is going to be, um, if you want to add a minor, and then really help you figure out that for your plan. So other things you want to get involved in, internships, research, and then help you really kind of map out what life looks like after you graduate. So there is plenty of time to explore throughout your time at St. Edwards, plenty of different opportunities that we encourage you to participate in on our campus, as well as in the Austin area and beyond. Okay, so the next question um, is, um, what factors contributed to your decision to attend St. Edwards? Um, I'll start with this one. Um, the biggest thing that um, contributed to my decision to go here um, was the community. Um, this was before I applied, I was um, touring different um, colleges throughout Texas. Um, when I came to this campus, I never heard of it before, but I got an email for it. So I came, saw what it was about. Um, and like the community here is so like close knit. Um, like it's like everybody knows everybody and um, people are like, really invested in you as a person and not just like a number or like a, 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 a somebody that's adding money to their pockets. Like they're interested in you. Um, so that part was the biggest thing for me um, because I came from a small high school, a smaller high school um, than what's normal in Texas. And um, to just go from that to like a small community where the classroom sizes are small, um, the teachers know you by your name, even some of the administration knows you by your name and like seeks to build personal relationships with their students. Um, it felt like the right fit for me. Um, going off of what Courtney said, community was definitely um, a big deciding factor for me as well, especially being an out-of-state student and um, going to a smaller high school as well. Um, having that community was very important to me, but also I was already looking kind of like diversity and stuff. And so I talked to Sydney Wade again, who was the president last year when I um, was a freshman and she was also, I think the vice president or president when I was a senior in high school. And so I talked to Sydney Wade a lot um, during my decision process. And when I actually came out to visit St. Ed's, I met with her in person and we sat down um, at the coffee shop on campus and we talked for like over an hour. And um, that really, I think solidified my decision. And if I didn't talk to Sydney and like ask her all the questions, cause I asked her about student life, I asked her about being a black student on campus. I asked her about um, BSA and just like kind of all the ins and outs that you might not always get from just like the broad overview of admissions. Um, so I think really talking to her um, helped me make my decision a lot, but also um, St. Edward's pursued me pretty heavily. I know they do that with a lot of their students, but they are, um, they are very persistent. And um, I kind of appreciated that though, because during the whole college application process, some schools seemed like they just kind of wanted your money or they didn't really care like that. So I think them being that persistent kind of reflected also like how they really care about their students and how um, it is really like a close knit community. So all of that together kind of made me choose St. Ed's and um, I'm happy that I did. I enjoy it. <laughs> Um, I think obviously we all had different experiences, but I didn't plan on going to St. Ed's. I got a few emails and I was like, yeah, whatever. Um, I didn't even recognize they were in Austin. Um, I recognized they were in Texas and I did not want to stay in Texas any longer. Um, I was definitely packed to go out of state. Um, yeah, I was, definitely, I was definitely ready to go out of state. I didn't want to hear anything else. Um, I had already done all my applications. I got accepted into where I wanted to go um, and had visited those places. And I think I decided I decided on two. Um, one was going to be UT if I stayed in state, and then if I stayed out, if I went out of state, which was my first choice, I was going to go to Cornell, and I was like, I'm good. Um, and I just walked on St. Ed's campus, and I kind of fell in love with the community, like they both said. Um, it was completely different than any school I actually toured, um, and I wasn't even a student there. <laughs> and I definitely did not have an official tour. Um, one weekend, my family was just like, please go see it. Like, I think you would like it. Um, so I went to go see it. It was definitely the only school that was small. And I just fell in love with it. I really fell in love with the community and nobody really even talked to me. It was just like the vibe that you get on campus was just so welcoming. It was like that pretty campus you see in TV that you couldn't believe was real. It was really real there. Um, it's just such a very bright and beautiful campus. 
it's very open. It's um, the very typical thing. Like you can see students studying everywhere, obviously pre-COVID, way pre-COVID. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was very nice. And I got to talk to some of the BSA e-board that obviously I didn't realize was on the e-board because they're older than me and I wasn't really trying to stay <laughs> in Texas. Um, and I think that definitely sold me as well. It was very nice to talk to some of the black students that were there. Um, and each of them were black girl students. Um, yes, so I think they graduated like one or two years ago, something like that. They're definitely way older than me. Um, and one of them ended up being the BSA president at the time. And it really sold me on it because I was just like, oh my God, like if they say, you know, it's amazing that I'm getting it and I'm feeling already accepted by my own while I'm on this campus, um, maybe it's not as bad. I definitely wanted to go, I was trying to find places that I wanted to go that could give me my academic needs as well as my black needs. Um, and I was, you know, trying to look at HBCUs, but not realizing that it was the same thing that I wanted. Um, so even though St. Edwards was a PWI, I mean, as far as the black community, we might be spaced out, but we were still like really deeply connected. So I think that's really what sold me. Great, thank you everyone for sharing. I do see that we have a couple questions. Um, I'm gonna um, answer them really quick. Um, and then I have a couple other questions I'm gonna ask you all. So um, someone did ask, what are the diversity ratios at St. Edwards? Um, we don't actually might know the staff a little bit more than me, but I will say um, that we are a Hispanic serving institution, which means more than 25% of our students identify as Hispanic or Latinx. Um, we have, I think we have, I think the, percentage of students who are black on our campus is around six or seven percent. So um, of course it's a percentage you want to increase and that's also why um, we are doing events like this to make sure that um, students know about St. Edwards and we are encouraging you know, students to, to be part of our campus and really um, increase the diversity that we offer. Um, but that's just kind of that's racial diversity. I mean I mentioned before as far as the um, religious diversity on our campus also the geographical um, like the diversity of our campus and so, you know, just also just thinking what does diversity mean and also just the intersectionality of our students as well. But um, we really do pride ourselves in um, being inclusive and being diverse. And we are also always trying to um, increase those ratios as well. Um, so just wanted to share that. You know, if there's anything you want to add, Leon, I'll put it Okay, great. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the next question is, Oh, interesting. Oh, this is a good one. Um, I'm gonna, I'll just ask it for the group. Um, so this is a student that shares um, her name. She's a um, Christian senior from um, Austin is looking at St. Edwards for this fall. So excited to hear that we have a senior here. Um, she had asked, what has been your favorite St. Edwards event that intentionally celebrates um, people of color or women of color? So would anyone like to answer that? <laughs> what are students answering? Go for it. Um, I think so far, <laughs> obviously everything can, you know, change. Um, it would definitely be the black student brunch. Sometimes it's a lunch brunch. It's different every time, but it's generally the earlier part of the day. Um, I had already been to it a couple times. At this point, I was already on the e-board. I think it was my first time being on the e-board. Um, and yeah, so we were there and we, we, we usually have like two a year, uh, one in the fall, one in the spring. This one was in the spring. Um, it tends to be like sometimes our unpopular one just because usually people come in the fall, aka when applying time happens. So we already knew that. Um, we had a couple students there that were obviously not St. Ed students yet. And then most of our e-board um, and like Anisha was there. We have a lot of people like that always come. So it was, it was a great time regardless. Um, that was definitely my favorite time. I just really got to connect with all the black women on campus, which was really nice. We got to like see each other's faces and like have a space for like four hours and just talk and cry or be, you know what I mean? And like, just really connect and bond. Um, no matter the age difference or, you know, if somebody was a senior or somebody was a freshman um, or somebody was a transfer. So it was a really nice experience to really bond. I think that that, to be honest, was probably my favorite experience because um, our president at the time spoke um, to the group and it was like kind of after the fact at the time, as far as like mentally, I was, whew, I was really trying. It was sophomore year and I was like, oh my God, um, I wanted to change my major and change my route. And it was a whole thing. And I was like freaking out because I've always been that person that kind of knew what I wanted to do um, early in life. Like I just, I, already, I always had a plan. Um, she just gave a really powerful speech and she was talking about um, how she wanted to really support us and just remind us that 
we're here doing the thing and we're doing amazing and that we shouldn't compare ourselves to, you know, our counterparts um, because, you know, everybody's situation is different. Um, and she ended it off with, I want you to believe and know that you do belong here because if you think about it, um, you're at an institution at the end of the day. And when these things were being thought up and created and built um, and eventually opened, these places were not built for you. Um, this place never even thought or imagined that a black woman would attend this institution and still excel and still become a doctor and still become a lawyer or a psychologist or you know anything else or an actor who the president was at the time. Um, and so it was just so humbling to know that like in my moment of, of really trial <laughs> and error and trial again, um, that this girl that we've had a few interactions but did not know my story at that time was able to speak on such an area and didn't realize how much that impacted me and how much that made me want to stay at St. Edwards because it was one of those things where I was like really debating if I was going to drop out and like try again or if I didn't know what I wanted to do and obviously it costs money so I can't waste money at the same time as I'm trying to figure it out um, but yeah I think that was probably my favorite experience and just really it just really humbled me and it really showed me like how important my community was to me and that you know I mean without them I probably would have dropped out and I probably would have left and you know figured it out along the way and been in a different place than I am today. Thank you so much, Joy, for sharing. Um, I do, I see we have another question. I'm gonna ask one of my own first and then I'll answer the one that was posted. It was specifically for Alexis, so. Um, but my next question for you, um, for you all panelists, um, is how have you advocated for social justice on or off campus? You did mention um, the vigils that um, were hosted previously, but kind of thinking of other ways that you've advocated for social justice. Um, I can answer this one as well. And I saw my question in the chat, but I'm still going to talk about this one <laughs> too. Um, so like I said before, um, social justice is just kind of stuff I'm already interested in. So I've done um, like seminars or I've done, you know, courses or anything like that pertaining to social justice already. And I know I've had teachers and professors and stuff reach out to me and like tell me about opportunities, which is always really nice because especially if you're teachers or your advisors or whatever, know what you're interested in, they could really help you with that. And that's a really good connection to have. So I've definitely have um, professors come to me and be like, hey, this is happening. I think you would be interested or like, I would like you to be a part of this. But also um, as far as in Austin, last year there was the whole Rodney Reed case that was happening right here in Austin. And um, it was very interesting because I know for a long time I wanted to be in DC because I was like I want to be in DC that's where all this stuff is happening like that's a like that's the capital of the country like I want to go and like I want to make a change rah 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 right and <laughs> that was like my major like that was my major thing um like being a senior and I came to Texas and I came to Austin and to have that happen like my first semester and have like the protests happened here and I actually get to be a part of it because me, Courtney and Lavelle went to the protests um, for Ronnie Reed that was at the Capitol. And that kind of made me, that kind of reassured me. I'm like, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Like there's plenty of stuff happening here. There's plenty of stuff and opportunity, opportunities happening, happening in Austin pertaining to stuff that I'm interested in and also just national stuff because the Rodney Reed case was something that has spread nationally that everyone was talking about during that time period. So it was very nice to be like kind of in the, kind of in the hub in it and hub of it and um just kind of be around it and be, you know, like right where it was happening and be able to actively participate and not just see it on social media or not just like, you know, donate or sign a petition, but to actually, you know, contribute that felt really nice. And that's probably like one of my favorite experiences I've had in Austin so far pertaining to like social justice or, um, you know, change or equity. Um, so that's definitely an experience um, that I wouldn't have gotten anywhere else if I wasn't at St. Ed's or if I wasn't in Austin. Thank you. Um, would anyone else like to answer that question? Okay, all right. Um, so the next question, I'm gonna um, have Alexis share um, first. So kind of the question that was asked was, um, do you feel like you've been able to find your place on campus, excuse me, do you feel like you've been able to find your place on campus and in Austin despite, despite being out of state? I have, it's definitely an adjustment and it takes time. Um, so 
be patient, but um, you will eventually find your group. It took me probably like a, a month or two to finally find like a good solid group. I was like, okay, like this is kind of like, you know, like this is like, you know, you find like, you find your group, you know, but um, it's, it's an adjustment just being away from home in general, being in a different culture, um, being around new different people who are from all over, but it's also very fun and interesting. Like I got to meet a bunch of people from, I got to meet people from New York, from Chicago, from North Carolina, from all over the country, but also I met a lot of people who are also from Texas and can kind of tell me like about Texas culture, or I got to meet people who are from Austin and can tell me about things to do in Austin. And um, it's, you, it's, there's a lot to do out here and you do, you like might miss home sometimes, but it's such a new experience. And it's like, you can, you could be very like, psyched out about it you can be very excited to discover new things and I know I was excited to discover new things because I always wanted to go out of state so um I was uh very excited to be here but it was definitely an adjustment just being away from your family being away from your friends and your friends are also in different places having their own experiences so it's um it's different but it's definitely fun and it's not um it's not as scary as you might think it may be because I definitely like psyched myself out for a while and was like, oh my God, like I'm like, I'm gonna be with my family. I'm gonna miss everyone. And you may get homesick sometimes, but uh, it's definitely, definitely like a completely like better experience when you're like exciting, like you try new things. Like you have to definitely, you know, try new things and put yourself out there because um, that's the only way you're gonna like kind of build relationships, like make new friends and uh, it, takes it may take a minute but it's it, it's been it's been fine I definitely feel like I found my place and like I found my group and I'm um well acquainted now great thank you for sharing and so the last question that I have before we kind of open it up for um general questions and answers from the audience um and feel free Courtney Alexis or Joy to answer um we did kind of touch upon it a little bit but if you would like to share with the group what are the benefits of being a college student in austin so not only the supportive campus community um, but also kind of things that you enjoy um, and have enjoyed doing in the city that we're that we're based in so we're about three miles off downtown so it's very close and accessible so what are the benefits of being a college student in austin um i can go first um i definitely think it's beneficial i come from houston so like I'm gonna be honest, Houston's better. We're just the better city, I'm sorry to say, but we're the best out of Texas. But <laughs> um, I definitely knew going into like thinking about what college I wanted to go to that I needed to either be in or near a big city um, for that city life, you know, everybody loves it. Um, I think Austin's very unique because we definitely have a lot of places to eat. Um, if you're not here already, you'll start to see it. Like, you know, obviously Instagram's listening, so. <laughs> Um, you'll start to see it though like you'll always have some as far as food you'll always be fed um always that's why you know it's easy to get the freshman 15 because you're just so bombarded by everything i mean you're gonna eat everything i just let it you know accept it now um but yeah as far as austin i thought it was very unique because austin's a very outdoorsy city um so they have a lot of outdoors things that houston doesn't have um such as paddle boarding I also don't come from a family that's very like hiking like like we don't hike camp we don't none of that so coming here is definitely different and I've tried a lot of different things I never would have thought I would uh, because you know it's just kind of like the Austin culture everybody knows like you know one Saturday somebody might be paddleboarding um, somebody might be going on a hike some of my friends go camping some of them go glamping like there's so many different things you could possibly do as far as outside it's crazy um, and it's also because it's surrounded by so much like land areas and like small towns so it makes it very easy um we have stuff like acl and south by which are really nice and they're big things that won't be happening so don't look forward to it but look forward to it in the next couple of years um but yeah i definitely think there's it's something for everybody um and even if it's not for you there's a lot of things that you can try that you probably will realize you'd like to do um i never realized i like to do water yoga i i didn't even know i liked yoga so um you know, like there's certain things like that. I would have never had that experience at Houston, mostly because our water is just not pretty, but yes, so. Um, I know it's like to add on to what Joy had shared, um, there's also so many um, job and occupational um, opportunities right here in Austin. Um, Joy mentioned South by Southwest and they do this like huge convention every year, clearly not this year, but uh, where you know they have like different booths and you get to like actually volunteer 
there and like see the inner workings of putting on this big event um, that people from all over the country, all over the world come to um, be a part of. You get to like shadow people who are doing like the logistics of it. Um, there's also booths where they like display internships for like tech or music or business or digital media, like a range of things. Um, you can also, the, we're right here in the Capitol, um, so you could, there's also internships at the Capitol. Um, there's a lot of, so for me, I know there are a lot of psychology um, internships here. Um, there are so many opportunities for whatever you want to do, whether it be something from science to art to teaching to everything in between. Um, there's something here in Austin where you can be hands-on and you can learn so much that um, I'm not sure you would get like other places, so yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with um, both Joy and Courtney. Um, I know every year uh, or every semester we have like internship fair on campus that gives you outlets to places in Austin that you can intern with or volunteer with or just kind of like look and be interested in. Um, so that's definitely very helpful, especially um, if you're not from here and you get to kind of branch out and learn about places and it can be places in any occupation. Um, and there is a lot to do in Austin. Um, Austin is a lot bigger than New Orleans. So it was definitely, it's definitely been fun for me to explore the city and there's still a lot more I want to do. Um, the, oh, I'm not gonna say the food. The barbecue is really good. I'm used, I'm used to seafood and um, New Orleans still rains for food for me, but um, they have really good barbecue out here. It's Texas, obviously there's gonna be um, good barbecue. But uh, it's Austin is a very very nice city. It's um it's very different than what I'm used to. So it's there's a whole lot. There's very pretty water out here. Um, we have the nice brown Mississippi River at home. So it's been nice to see like blue rivers, blue lakes. Um, be able to go out and paddleboard like Joy was saying, do things on Lake Austin or um you know there's like Travis and North Austin. There's hills out here again. I'm not used to that hills, mountains, all that's very pretty. But also it's like there's there's the city, like there is South Congress that's really literally right, like we're on South Congress. Um, there's downtown that's down the street from the school. There's a whole lot to do. There's UT, which if you know if you want to go to bigger events, go to a party, whatever, if you're really trying to like live that college life, if that's what you're about, <laughs> there's those opportunities. So um there's a whole lot to do and there's a whole variation of things to do because like Courtney was saying, like we even like there's art museums, art exhibits um plays you can go see so there's really like you're not going to be lacking for anything to do out here like you really shouldn't like get bored you might get broke but you won't get bored <laughs> wonderful thank you um i like that you won't get bored you'll get broke um i like thinking about anyways um so i do want to open up our time if anyone has any questions any of our attendees please just um drop them in the q a function please put your question there um, I do want to highlight, um, thank you so much, Courtney and Alexis and Joy, for all that you shared. I would say especially kind of being in Austin, they did mention UT is close by. That's something that BSA has done is they have connected with um, the Black student organizations at UT. Um, Houston Sultan um, is a um, HBCU, so they've also done an event with them. I think also ACC as well. And so just thinking that Austin is a college town, it's a college city, and so it's a really young, youthful, vibrant place. And so being a student, a student at St. Edwards, you not only are able to build community on our campus with you know, other students as well as faculty and staff, but getting to know other college students that are close by as well. So um, kind of really building your community and that can be great for making friends, but then also kind of for developing a professional network and that can really help open up um, potential like job opportunities like Courtney had mentioned. And many of our alumni do decide to stay in the Austin area because they've been able to um, build those connections. So. I do see we have another questions. Um, so yeah, so we have a question um, related to scholarships. So are there scholarships specifically for Black students at St. Edward? So um, no, we don't have um, a specific scholarship for Black students or really um, any certain like identity or affinity group. Um, when, like I said before, when you apply, we automatically will continue for any type of academic-based scholarships. Um, and then we use a fast for tax on traditional need-based aid. Um, in addition, for students who are deciding to pursue theater, they can apply. Um, and attend scholarship audition weekend to receive another scholarship. We also have scholarships for students who come from um, Holy Cross High School, since we are a Holy Cross institution. Um, so those tend to be kind of the more specific scholarships that students can apply for. But um, primarily, you know, if you if you want to go to St. Edwards, you apply, you see if you're um, 
would be a good fit for campus and then we're able to offer you some additional funding for that. So yeah, that's a good question. Any other questions for myself from the admission office, for any of our students, or for Leonel? As you all think of questions, um, I do want to highlight on this slide a couple different things. So um, in order to stay connected, stay engaged, um, to continue this conversation, if you would like to connect with um, our Black Student Alliance, our you know, student organization that's being represented here tonight, if you want to follow us um, on Instagram, there's a handle listed right there. If you'd like to follow um, and kind of connect a little bit more about the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, there's our handle as well. And then our general St. Edwards University um, Instagram page is listed there tonight. Um, starting about right now, they're hosting a Instagram live event where they'll be focusing on student activism and that's led by one of our members of BSA. She's also the vice president for the student body. Um, she will be sharing about kind of focusing on activism and encouraging our students to get involved in activism in the political process to vote and have their voices be heard. So definitely want to encourage you all to um, attend that event. Also, um, we have several links listed. We do encourage students to come visit our campus and get to know our community better. So we have opened up in-person tours um, on a small limited capacity that happen on Monday, Friday, and Saturdays. Um, they're kind of socially distanced. Everyone's expected to wear a mask, but you are able to walk around our campus and tour the outside area. That's led by one of our student tour guides. So if you go to our website, see edwards.edu slash visit campus, you can sign up for that. Um, opportunity. We also have a wide variety of different other webinars. So like this one tonight that you all signed up for, we also have um, sessions with our financial aid office to talk about how to fill the FAFSA. We do an application workshop. We do a Friday in focus event where you can learn about different academic programs every other Friday. Um, and then we will have our last webinar focusing on, on equity um, and inclusion that will be focusing on how we support um, and welcome our students identifying with the LGBTQ plus community. So that'll be happening um, in a couple of weeks, so definitely stay tuned for that. And then also any seniors, if you are um, still kind of considering what schools to apply for, it's very early in the semester still. So if you go to our website, see edwards.edu slash apply, you can start your application. And if you have any additional questions after this evening, please feel free to reach out to us at seu.admit at St. Edwards University. Um, that way we can follow up with you. We can we, we'd be happy to connect you with your admission counselor, whether it's myself or someone else on our staff. If you want to get connected with our students or a professor um, or learn a little bit more about what we offer, we'd be happy to follow up with you. So please feel free to reach out to us after this evening. Don't feel like this conversation is over. Once we do sign off, um, we want to get to know you. And so please reach out and let us know any different questions that you have. Um, so one last question for the sake of time. Um, it'll be directed for Courtney. The question is, um, they have similar interest in your major minor. Um, how has St. Edwards helped you look into prospective um, careers and what careers are you looking forward to? Um, so for me, I started off as just a psychology major. Um, and then like I was thinking that I took, um, no, um, so when you're, in, I'm in the honors program. Um, and so in the honors program seminar my first year, we had a professor, her name is Jennifer, Dr. Jennifer Veninga. She came in and she spoke to us about um, her profession, which is religion, the theology and religion. And she was talking about it and it sounded like something that I was interested in. And I have like a very heavy background in church in Houston. Um, so I went in and I talked to, at the time, her name was Dina Merrillis. She was my success coach. I talked to her. Um, I was like, I, I really like psychology, but I want to know if I could take any um, religion classes or the theology classes. And she was like, you know, you, you can do that. You can actually add on a theology minor it's only um, 19 hours which can be done in like two or three semesters um so I added it on um and then we from there we went on to talk about like what would that look like when I graduate and I start applying to grad schools um and really um it especially with psychology um it really sets you up for like counseling or for mentorship or for leadership or even teaching um, so we talked about that and like Alexis mentioned, um, they have internship um, fairs right here on campus. Um, so I, they directed me to those and I got to see um, people who were in the same profession as I wanted to be in, which is like mentorship for young children. Um, so they kind of like walk me through the process of like, this is how you get into this. This is what, uh, what you need to kind of study in 
grad school, um, what kind of internships and like apprenticeships that you need to do in order to reach this goal. Um, so basically they broke it down, uh, Dina and like other people I talked to broke it down step by step um, and made sure that they answered any questions I have. Um, so I feel like once you reach out, um, whoever is your success coach will walk you through step by step um, and make sure, and they, they'll hold your hand kind of along the way, which is a good thing about this campus is that they don't baby you, but they do like make sure that you have like everything you need. And if you have any questions, they're more than willing to get back to you. Um, and so just make sure that you are the best version of yourself um, academically and professionally. Help to answer your question. I think so. That was a great response, Courtney. And I just will say, like we had kind of mentioned with the success coach, so um, they're your academic advisor. So as an incoming freshman student, you'll be working with them usually the summer before you even start classes in the fall. So they're going to be reaching out to you already building that relationship. And you'll meet with them several times throughout the semester. Um, kind of that's already built in your schedule. But if you ever have a question, you can always reach out to them and schedule a meeting. Um, but they'll be working with you throughout your time at St. Edwards. And then in addition, um, we do have our office of um, like professional de development and career services and so we have career coaches there and so you can you know even as early as your first year as a freshman you can start working with those career coaches to um, figure out what life looks like after graduation whether that is grad school like Courtney had mentioned or I'm um, applying for a job or applying for a fellowship program like the Fulbright or the Gilman or other or like other programs like that so um, that's definitely it's great to know that you have a whole success team that's there to help you. Um, and then also all of our career services are free even after you graduate. So even after you leave the Hilltop, you can always reach out to someone within the office for additional professional support. Awesome, wonderful. Yes, that did answer the question. So <laughs> thank you, Courtney. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm gonna wrap up this session, um, but thank you so much everyone um, who was able to join us tonight for the questions that you asked. Thank you so much for um, our lovely panelists. Courtney, Joy, and Alexis for sharing about um, the incredible work that you've done through BSA, the way that you are shaping our campus to be inclusive and supportive um, for Black students, but really just for all students. Um, and I want to just also thank you for sharing about um, your own college experience, um, what you love about St. Edwards, what you love about living in Austin, um, the support community that you found here. And thank you again, um, Leonel, just for sharing about your office and uh, the ways in which you support um, and really lead our students to feel welcome and included. So thank you everyone. All right, any, any last things anyone would like to say before we sign off? I have one thing. I just wanna say everybody's scared. Nobody knows what they're doing, so it's fine. I think I really would love if somebody told me that because I felt like I was the only person that didn't know what to expect from college or like what to do. So just know everybody's literally running around with their heads chopped off as well. <laughs> Yes, that's true, especially in the era of COVID. So um, yes, and there is no such thing as a dumb question. So throughout this whole college application um, decision-making process, if you, yeah, if there are any questions, concerns, um, worries or fears that come out um, during this, feel free to reach out to us and we will do our best to support you and provide all the information we, we can um, so that when you make that college decision and if you are considering St. Edwards, that you will feel like you made the best decision with all the information that you can have, so. Well, thank you, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful evening and definitely feel free to reach out with any additional questions. And I hope that you um, do apply. I hope you do attend our future webinars and hopefully we'll see you on our campus um, in the spring or in the fall or sometime soon in the future. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Hey, everyone.